This could be the best AI tool for music production right now. This entire doll has AI integration, which allows you to generate MIDI, set up a mixing chain, master the track, and way more. Wave tool comes with a built-in chatbot that will assist you with anything inside of the program. Just type something into the prompt and watch it go to work in real time as it applies changes straight to your track or it will even give you advice on how to proceed. Well, all of this sounds too good to be true, right? Well, that's exactly what I thought as well. So today we're going to start off the same place that I did, learning how to use this program. As my initial tests really didn't go that smoothly. We'll go from the very beginning stages and my initial thoughts on the program but then we'll go through a different project when I've had a lot more time to understand the program. Stick around because not everything is as it seems. All right, so this is Wave Tool. All right, let's start with some AI straight off the bat over here. Go into Chatbot, clicking the button right there. Let's start off with a simple chord progression. Can you make me a simple triad chord progression in E? Minor. And there we go. After a short waiting period, we've got our results. And all we have to do is click the above button, and it'll pop out over here. Okay, virtually zero rhythm and it's a one bar loop just repeating over and over again for four bars. So not very interesting at all. So we can go back on over to chatbot. Can I have more variety in my chord progression? Question mark. I think it's very important to be nice to our AI friends over here because we never know when they can be in control of us. And when that happens, I want to be in the good list. Let's click the button, add it to there. Yeah, I mean, there's more variety. So like with any AI, it's important to remember that it's not gonna be perfect right off the bat. You do have to make a lot of different changes over here. So that's going to be our chord progression that we're going to use for right now. What's next is to alter the instrument that we're currently using. Click on the instrument right there and then even change the presets. There's not a whole lot right now, but maybe we can find something else that we like. Let's try changing the tempo over here as well. That's kind of nice, actually. Let's add some reverb and delay to the chords. Sweetums. <laughs> That's really nice, actually. That sounds really good. And if you'd like to add a different effect or uh, instrument manually, you can go over to Add Device. Here's where you can find the reverb, delay, and even the dynamics. Oh, this is so stupid. Okay. There's just like zero rhythm and like creativity behind it. It's just going up and down in a very lazy, stagnant way. Okay, so like this sound selection, it's okay. You know, it's like the best one I can really find for this. Make my melody more interesting. This version has more varied note durations and more syncopation, which makes the rhythm more interesting. So let's go ahead and try that on out. Just so we can really try and make this fit the best that we can uh, while altering this, let's try and add some more reverb and delay. Like there's almost a coherent idea over here. Like I would even almost just get rid of these completely, right? Just get rid of those. Like that actually ends off pretty well. Like that sounds pretty good right there. It's, it sounds usable. All right, drums. Here's a drum beat that should work well with your project. We're gonna see if it actually is really listening to our project at all. Just super boring, not creative at all. I should have to talk a bit more about this right now. I'm sure that if I spend a, a lot more time, I can get a little bit more fluid with it. And it's also not integrated with your doll in the slightest, right? With plugins like Audio Cipher, that's a plugin that you can put inside of your favorite doll, like FL Studio for me, to where something like this, you'd be forced to completely change everything. So that's basically my thoughts on this right now. So here I am thinking I just wasted all this time on this bust of a DAW. But I decided to not give up on it and keep testing off camera. And that's when everything became clear. I was being way too impatient, giving up after only one prompt. See, the thing to remember about AI is that it's not an easy one button cures all. You really need to learn how to communicate with each specific program. Take your time and have fun with it. Experiment with different prompts and bounce ideas off of the chatbot. So I made a brand new beat from scratch with the new perspective that I learned, patience. 
Okay, so I finally like got something that I really, really like. And not only is it something that I can really use, but I actually had so much fun making it too. And I really feel like I got a much better handle on this program now. I cannot find a good place for a microphone. <laughs> all right, so first of all, here's the track that I ended up making. It is definitely more of a lo-fi sort of deal. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But it is something that I really, really like. And I want to show you guys kind of more how I got to the stage. So I use a lot of the chatbot over here. And the plan was to go through the logs and show you guys what I did and uh, go through it from there. So just to get started off with the entire track, everything was blank. I just put in triad, chord progression, and E minor. I wanted stuff a little bit more general there. So it gave me a chord progression that I didn't really like all that much. It was changing up like every single beat. Like every single beat was a new chord. So that was way too fast for me. I told to make each chord one bar long. It did not do that at all. The one big change that made my chords so much better in this case, I told to use long sustained chords and it understood exactly what I was trying to go for when I said that. It even told me it'll be eight bars long with each chord held for two bars. And it did, it worked out perfectly. But I wanted it to be bigger. So I told it to add a seventh note to all the chords and it easily did that. This is where I'm really starting to get a groove for everything and know how to talk to this uh, AI. I finally got to a place where I was really happy with the chords that I made, so I told it that I needed a lo-fi melody. It created a very bland, just cascading melody that I wasn't really a fan of. I, I straight up told it to make the melody more interesting. I ended up actually just going in manually and doing it. I told it to add uh, reverb and delay. Since we're doing lo-fi, I told it to EQ out some of the high end from the melody. Going over to the wavetable synth, clicking on that. I just stayed on the sun pluck because I, I did want it to be more of like a pluck sort of deal. But instead of using the normal basic uh, saw square, I put on vocal wave tool and that's what gave it this sort of effect. mess around a bit more with the uh, effects than I originally did with the tempo delay increasing the feedback and decreasing the the beats like the time that's going to take to do the delay really helped out with like a slapback effect which worked out really well using the EQ with the resonance to really help fit that lo-fi feel that I told the chat bot to make me a counter melody in a higher registry it gave me a longer melody that I didn't like so I actually ended up putting it into like one bar making a couple changes and then cloning that again And then I wanted some more variety for the melody, and I, it didn't really do a whole lot from there, so I decided to go from, to an arpeggio. We're going to skip that at the end of the day. Once I was done, I didn't like the arpeggio, not because of the plugin, but the way that the beat was just structured out, it didn't fit very well, so I ended up taking that out completely. The one thing that I will mention, though, is that I mentioned, does the arp follow our chords? And it even said, Apologies for the uh, confusion earlier. I reviewed the project and realized that I did not use the correct chord progression. So then it fixed it from there, which I thought was kind of cool. It realized that it made a mistake and it knew where to find it and correct it. That's pretty interesting. From there, it was time for the beat. So I told it to add some drums with some swing. Since we're doing lo-fi, that felt the right thing to do. Although this is actually what made the ARP not fit in the beat. Also we're doing lo-fi, so we EQ'd out some of the high end from the drums as well. With the drums over here, I did make a couple different patterns, slightly changing up, adding just a couple more kicks and that was pretty much it. The main thing that I did realize and like, got a lot of inspiration from was when I told it to add some swing, the snare is off the grid by a whole step. And that actually made a really, really interesting groove from here. Now, obviously other genres can kind of experiment more with putting a snare, a half step or even more away like drill, for example, but it's still not something that I would have done if uh, I didn't have the chat bot to help me out here. This part right here is kind of confusing to me. It's I told to add some distortion to the drums, but it said that adding distortion is not a function access to uh, wave tool, which they have a distortion plugin in here. So why can't the chat bot use the functions that it used for all the other plugins that it put for me? In fact, it even told me to use the effects in my DAW or a third party VST. So I'm like, oh my God, can I use a third party VST? In here? Uh, you know, you can't. You, you can't do that. So, just moving on from there, I actually wanted to see if I could such in my kick to all the other tracks, like the melodies. And it said sure. And I applied it to every single part of the tracks over here. As that is all that I've got to do for this beat over here, I've got my loop. I'm good to go. We can go do one more thing over here, which I forgot to do before. I'm going to tell Chatbot to help me master this track. And it's going to be giving you advice and uh, telling you exactly what it's going to do to help you master it, not just one little step. It's going to apply an EQ to cut low frequencies, apply compression, increase mass your gain by 3 dB. So let's finally hear how that sounds. So not only did I end up liking the beat that we made from here, 
I had so much fun just making it, just really communicating with the chatbot, and it really did feel like I wasn't making this beat alone, which again, kind of scary, but also really cool at the same time. This was actually one of the most fun processes of making music that I've had in a while. Is it going to work perfectly straight off the bat right away? No. And I think that's a big misnomer about AI. I think everyone just wants to type in a generic prompt and get an original piece of music, which it's not going to be that easy. Not at this stage of development yet. We have to be intentional when telling AI what we want, which is not always clear at first. Sometimes you might not know how to convey what you want the AI to do. Because you can say something in one way that it might not understand, then say it in a different way and it completely gets what you're trying to do. Taking the time to go into detail and not worry about when a camera is on really helped me understand how to use this program. 